Uh, so hi, my name is, uh, is Dennis Crowley. I'm one of the co-founders and, uh, uh-oh, where's the, okay, I'm one of the co-founders and uh, the CEO of a company called Foursquare. Do you guys know Foursquare? Does anyone know it? Or really, that's good. This is always like really comforting that people know what it is. Does anyone use it or has anyone used it recently? Okay, great. So what we're doing is um, we're, you know, we're trying to make things that make uh, cities easier to use. So we're building, thing, we're building mobile applications. We've got something for iPhone and for Android. We're building something for BlackBerry. That basically, they, they, you know, it's kind of like a social utility, a little bit of a friend finder, combined with like a smarter city guide. And then we're using a little bit of game mechanics to incent people to explore cities in ways that they haven't done before. Um, so we're, we're a scrappy six-person startup in New York. This is our team. Um, I had a, a, a slide of our office, but I took it out. I wish I could show you that. But what I'm going to do is walk you through some, of the sli um, some slides that show you a little bit of what Foursquare does, and I'll talk about how it's different than a lot of other things out there. Um, <clears throat> so the main thing with Foursquare is it asks you to check in to certain places. So um, users will use it to, uh, you know, to, to check in to a... Um, no, to the places that they're at. So what you're seeing right up on this screen is a list of where all of uh, given friends are at, right? So you have a list of where all your friends may be. When users check in a location, they're basically opting into a, to a certain place. Now, instead of like other city guides or social networks that will show you, uh, or other location-based services that will show you a list of just places that are sorted nearby, what we do is <clears throat> we take a lot of this data and we, we chop it up. So we can tell you the places that you've been to, the places that your friends have been to, um, and you know, we can kind of cut this data up in all sorts of other interesting ways. Um, so uh, I'm assuming a lot of you guys are Twitter users as well. Twitter users, yeah. So you know how Twitter can get really, really noisy, and it's like a little bit of what people are eating, what people are thinking, and uh, what people are reading and watching online. A lot of what we're doing is breaking it down with location. So you generally know where people are, and it makes it a lot easier to meet up with people uh, when you're out in different cities. Oh no, did I just go blank? Oh, whoops, sorry about that. So let me, so let me jump ahead of myself. Um, so w when we ask people to check in, basically telling us where they happen to be, every time someone checks in, we, uh, we reward them with different points, right? So you can get points for going to new places, you get points for being out with, different, with, uh, with new friends, you get points for meeting new people. Uh, if I was to jump in a cab and go across town from the east side of Manhattan to the west side of Manhattan, I get more points for doing that, because I'm doing something that I normally haven't done before. Um, and as you accumulate these points, people tend to get pretty competitive about it. So we have this leaderboard up here that is basically ranking the things that people have done over time. So if if I'm going out and I'm having like a really interesting week, I've done a lot of traveling, I've gone to some new places, I show up higher on the leaderboard than other folks have. And people get really, really competitive about this type of stuff. Um, and over time, as people start checking in, we can get smarter about the list of things that we show people. So we know, oh, that you've been to, you know, that these are the types of restaurants that you go to, these are the types of coffee shops you go to, these are the places that are nearby that you haven't been to, and these are the places that your friends have been to that are nearby. Um, so let me just skip ahead. One of the other things that we're kind of doing is like we're using game mechanics, again, to incentivize people to do more interesting stuff. We built this like system of badges. They're really like digital candy for different users. Um, and so based on the types of activities that you're doing, we kind of, you unlock certain things. And it's like, it's kind of jokey and it's like a little bit corny sometimes, but you know, we give people, like we, we award people badges for like certain social activities. So the Porky badge that you see over here, uh, you get that if you go to a whole bunch of barbecue places. Uh, the far, far away badge is if you hang out uptown instead of hanging out downtown. Um, the, uh, we have one called the school night, which is you get if you unlock it because you've been out, uh, you know, you've checked in after 3 a.m. like on a Wednesday morning or something. So it's like a lot of like little social commentary that's built in. It's kind of jokey and fun in an interesting way. And what we're finding is that, you know, we basically set up these goals. It's like 20 or 30 things for different users to unlock. And uh, people get kind of fanatic about it. And you can kind of see why, because it's kind of like merit badges or like Boy Scout badges, but for a social life, right? And a lot of the stuff that we're doing now is kind of like it's really heavily based off of nightlife. But you can see the real opportunity here to you know, make things that are interesting for, for college students, make things that are interesting for, for parents. You, know? uh, you should be rewarded for going to see more movies, for going to see more art galleries. Um, but really, it's, like it's, it's trying to explore how do you use like, loca location-based and social software to encourage people to do things that they hadn't done before, to really make them more interesting and reward them for doing that stuff. Um, another thing we're doing is we have this like, whole engine for like, collecting tips, like little mini Yelp reviews. And, and so people give us these recommendations, and they're not like, you know, oh, the pizza here is fantastic, but they're more directed, like, go to this place and try this particular thing. You know, go to this, uh, go to this bar, you know, here's the bartender's name, this is the cocktail you need to order. And so anywhere you go across like our 100 cities, we're gonna have a, a couple more cities today, I should note that. But um, 
uh, yeah, anywhere you go across all of these cities, you generally, you know, you can just open up your phone and you get like instant recommendations about the types of things to do. And then when you check in at places, we pop these things up for you. So it's not often you'll be at a restaurant and, uh, you know, you check in somewhere and it tells you specifically what you should order on the menu. Like specifically what you should have while you're there or where you should be going next. Um, and it's kind of like you're unlocking experience points. Like, if you, you, know, you want to use like an uh, analogy of like how do you turn life into a game, it's like taking a, you know, your typical role-playing game that you used to play on your Nintendo or whatnot and giving people experience points. You should be able to level up for like art and culture and music and bars and restaurants and all these different categories. This is a different way of kind of exploring the city. So this is the check-in history. I was just in Amsterdam for a couple days, and of all the places that I went, in addition to this being like a great social utility, like, hey, next time I go to Amsterdam, I know exactly the places that I went to. Uh, it's going to help me find those places again. You know, it's getting a little bit smart about knowing what my friends were doing while I was there. Um, I also, I found this, like, you know, I found this great place that reminds me of one of my favorite places in New York. And, you know, f being able to find that and discover that, it should feel like, like finding the boomerang in Legend of Zelda or something, you know? And, you know, it's like, this is something that I've collected. It's a treasure that I found in a different city, and it's something that I'll go back to. And this is really the, the experience that we're trying to, you know, uh, trying to create with a lot of the stuff that we're doing with Foursquare. So here's, like, general feedback that we, the type of feedback that we get from users, that by using some of these game mechanics, people are feeling a lot more, you know, they're feeling motivated to do things that they wouldn't do before. You know, like, a lot of the stuff was built because we were looking for a reason, like, what's my motivation to get in a cab and go someplace that I haven't been to before. And so we started experimenting with building this stuff, and it turns out that, yeah, it's sticky enough and it's motivational enough to get people doing some of these things. Um, we made a badge called the Gym Rat Badge. And the Gym Rat Badge is, you know, you get it for going to gym, you know, going to your gym 10 times, like 10 different check-ins at a different gym. Um, we're hearing over and over from users, it's like, because of the badge, I started going to the gym again. I started exercising again. And we've done this for, you know, all, all sorts of different categories. So we're thinking, like, can we, like if, we met, if we had a badge for going to see 10 different rock shows, for seeing a badge for seeing all the different Oscar movies, we had a badge for, you know, trying the best, uh, you know, all the best burgers in New York and going to the best rated Zagat restaurants, like, would that be something that would motivate people to do these things they normally wouldn't do? And we're finding that, yeah, the answer seems like it's yes. Um, I'm really excited about the, the gym rats stuff and just like the ability to get people to do stuff in physical space because it reminds me a lot of Nike Plus, um, you know, which gives you metrics based on, on, you know, how you're exercising and your performance over time. And I feel like we can do the same type of stuff for social life and culture and, you know, measuring the way that you're interacting with your friends and the things that you're doing. We can do that same type of stuff for social nightlife that Nike Plus does really great for exercising and just for fitness in general. Um, you know, we're seeing this, like we have another game mechanic built into Foursquare and it's like you, you become the mayor of a place if you've been there more than anyone else. And, um, you know, people get really competitive over these things. People want to become the mayor of their coffee shop or their office or, you know, their favorite, uh, you know, their favorite restaurant at a lunch spot. And we find that, like, because we're using these mechanics, it's incenti incentivizing people to, you know, specifically go to these places in scenarios where they wouldn't. People jumping out of bed, you know, in the middle of the night to run down and check in so they can steal the mayorship back. Or, you know, this quote from Fred was like, oh, yeah, I chose to go to this coffee shop as opposed to this one because I wanted to keep my mayorship back. Um, and it's, it's interesting, it's like a lot of this content's going back into, into Twitter, like we're pushing it back into Twitter, we're starting to push it back into Facebook. So when people go and search, we're talking about the real-time web a lot here, you know, search for things like Starbucks, it's like you're seeing a laundry list of, of people's check-ins, right? And we're finding that local merchants are also finding this. When they go and they search for their coffee shop on Google, they get like a Yelp research, uh, a, a Yelp review or maybe like a Google, um, uh, a Google local listing. But if they search for, th for themselves on Foursquare, they're finding a whole bunch of check-ins. They're finding a conversation about what's going on at that place. And venues are kind of getting into it. We see them hanging up flyers and writing on chalkboards like, this is the mayor, and, it, and uh, you know, starting to offer different promotions where it's like, oh, if you're the mayor of this particular place, you'll get, um, you know, you get a free coffee. If you've been here with three friends, you get, you know, a free appetizer. We have, um, you know, the uh, BART, the subway organization out in San Francisco. They're looking at all the people that are checking in at subway stations, and they're giving them, um, like, there's a raffle at the end of the month for free Metro card. So there's all these different incentives that, that venues are using and different organizations are using to reward the people that are frequenting those, business, those businesses most. Um, the last thing I wanted to talk about is kind of the API. So we've had all this data, we have this amazing set of data where people have been over time, and we're seeing, um, you know, we just opened it up for users to start playing with. So I got a couple seconds left, I wanted to walk you through a couple of the more interesting things that we're seeing. Um, they are these guys that are doing augmented reality, so now you can walk through the, you know, walk through the city kind of holding your phone up and seeing where people have checked in, seeing what people are saying about certain spots. Um, this is a game called Mob Zombies, which is based on check-in data. So as you're running around the city, there's like hordes of zombies that are released 
that are, you know, you're supposed to be running away from them, that are based upon uh, you know, real check-in data, like where, where people are in real time. Uh, these guys from Social Grade are kind of measuring this stuff out, and you can see, oh, like, what's the breakdown of the Java Center over time? Where have people been? Where are people checking in? Uh, and then we saw something where people had built, someone built something with the API where you can check in with your Oyster card, your RFID subway card in London, and like, report that data back. So this is all this interesting stuff that's just kind of happening now, and uh, we're really at the front end of it. So I'm, I'm pretty excited to get to talk to you guys all about it. And if you have any questions, uh, feel free to hit me up on Twitter or send me an email. So thank you very much. Thank <clears throat> you.